Hi stargazers, here's what's going on in the sky this month. The highlights are Mars brushing past Saturn, Venus passing through the Pleiades, the pink supermoon, the monthly planetary lineup with the moon, the Lyrid meteor shower, and Venus doing its monthly flyby of the moon. On the 2nd of April, Mars passes below Saturn, and this is a good opportunity to compare the colours because Mars always looks slightly orangish or brownish in the sky, and this is more apparent when it's very, very close to Saturn, which is more whitish in appearance. On the 3rd and 4th of April, Venus passes through the Pleiades, and that's a star cluster that can be seen without any special equipment. But for those of us with equipment, this is a photo opportunity not to be missed. The Pleiades are a cluster of stars located in the constellation Taurus, and at this time of year, Taurus is visible in the western sky after sunset. Notice how the arrangement of the stars is similar to Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, like a pan and a handle. This year, Venus will pass through the Pleiades star cluster, you can see this through a long lens camera, binoculars, or a basic telescope, and it's a really special photo opportunity. Venus passes through the Pleiades once every eight years, so fingers crossed for clear skies on the 3rd and 4th of April. Now the 8th of April sees the full pink supermoon of 2020. A supermoon occurs when a full moon happens on the same night as the moon reaches perigee, or the closest point to Earth in its orbit. At this point, it looks slightly larger and brighter than usual. Let's talk a bit about the perigee. The moon's orbit around the Earth is elliptical, and the Earth is not at the exact center of that orbit. The point in the orbit that is closest to the Earth is called the perigee, and the point in the orbit that's the furthest from the Earth is the apogee. The moon takes 27 days to complete its orbit, some recent full moons have taken place close to the perigee, and this month's full moon is the closest to the perigee this year. Though the moon is called a pink moon, its colour won't be any different than normal. It'll be golden orange when low in the sky, and bright into white when it rises. The name comes from the pink wildflowers called creeping flocks, as these bloom in the early spring under the April's full moon. On the 14th, 15th and 16th of April, we'll see the monthly meeting of Jupiter, Saturn, Mars and the Moon in the sky. However, it will be the last time we see Mars that close to the other planets in the sky for quite some time. Let's start in Hawaii, looking at the nights of the 14th, 15th and 16th of April. See how the Moon moves past those planets. Hawaii often has some of the best views of the sky. I'm so jealous. I'm on the other side of the world from that. Moving across to Tokyo, similar view of the moon passing the planets. Let's see how it looks from Sydney as well. And then to the Middle East, where the moon gets very close to Jupiter on the early morning of the 15th. Southern Africa will have such a good view of this event. Look how close the Moon gets to Jupiter on the morning of the 15th and to Mars on the morning of the 16th. This is what I will see from London on the 15th and the 16th. If you look at the time and date stamps, you'll notice that in the Northern Hemisphere the spectacle takes place around 4 or 5 in the morning and in the southern hemisphere, between one and two in the morning. Look how close the moon gets to Mars, early on the morning of the 16th over Buenos Aires. The 22nd and 23rd of April sees the peak of the Lyrid meteor shower. And this is the earliest reported meteor shower in history, first reported in 687 BC. 
There have been fewer cars on the road in recent months, so in places where there is normally light pollution worsened by air pollution, the skies might be much clearer this year for the Lyrids. Get the cameras out and look anywhere in the sky from around midnight onwards. If you don't have a camera that can capture long exposure photos, download a smartphone app like Camera Plus 2. This has a slow shutter functionality of up to 30 seconds exposure, so if you can mount your smartphone on a tripod or fix it somewhere with no vibrations, you could probably get some good shots. There will be around 10 meteors per hour on average at the peak. And on the 26th of April, Venus makes its monthly flyby of the moon. The moon will be in the waxing crescent phase at this time. This is a picture I took of the moon and Venus around the same time last month. I hope you enjoyed this month's sky forecast and I hope you get to go outside and see all of the things the sky has to offer this month. If you enjoyed this month's video, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And hopefully I'll see you next month for the May sky forecast. I'll leave you with the summary.